So what does this day mean to the people who call Ukraine home? Let's bring in Ina Sofson. She's an Ukrainian member of parliament with the Holos party. Um, hello, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. It's been 365 days. How did you mark this anniversary today? You're in Kyiv. How did you mark it? Well, uh, I'm sorry for correcting you, but everybody is talking about one year of war in Ukraine. But reality is we are nine years into the war. Of course, the big invasion started exactly one year ago. But I think that, that people tend to forget that we have been fighting this war for over eight years before the full-scale invasion started. But of course, uh, one year ago exactly, the li lives of all of us have changed dramatically, despite being at war for eight years before that. Uh, because uh, because we woke up to hearing explosions in our cities uh, all over the country, east, west, center. And that is something that changed us dramatically. That has, uh, has, has affected us emotionally on a very big extent. But I also think that that is something that has made us so much stronger. Ukraine as, as a nation became so much stronger. And we have proven to the world that we are actually extremely strong and committed and dedicated. And we can actually fight against the second biggest army in the world and win. And I think that is something that we have to take stock of today, uh, but not to relax and say that, OK, we are winning and then just, uh, you know, um, just forget about, uh, about everything. We're still in at the midst of a very heavy fighting on the East. And, um, and we remember about that every single moment of, of today, particularly. Do you feel, Ina, that you are winning? I know that we have kicked Russians away from Kiev. Look, I'm now sitting in my home. Russians have been literally 20 minutes drive from my home, from where I live. I could see explosions around Irpin and Bucha from the windows of my house. That is how close they have been. They are not here anymore, and they're not trying to get here anymore because they know what they will face. We have kicked them out from Kherson. We have kicked them out from Kharkiv region. So, so it is doable. The question now is not about commitment of Ukrainian army. I think that, that we have proven that they have. They don't lack any, any commitment. They don't have any problems with their professionalism. The question now is, is to at least match the, the, the number of weapons available to the Ukrainian army to that that Russian army has. And I think that the argument that we have heard a year ago, half a year ago, Ukrainian soldiers don't know how to use this type of weapon, so it's not safe to give them this type of weapon. I don't think these arguments hold anymore. Because indeed, we have proven that our soldiers can use the weapons very efficiently. So I think the question now is, is how soon the weapons will get here and then Ukrainian army will actually kick Russians out of, that, of our territory. Yes, we can do this. I don't have any doubt about that. The question is how soon we would be able to go on this counteroffensive. And that is very much dependent upon the supply of weapons to the army. So you, you're talking about a counteroffensive and weapons that you need. Which ones would you need for that counteroffensive that you feel are not coming fast enough? Well, uh, the question of tanks, uh, we have been talking about that for months now, and luckily there is a breakthrough, and Germany decided to provide tanks, and other European countries, um, Canada pitched in a bit. So, so, so it's happening, but we have to remember that we need bigger number of tanks. So today, Germany announced that they're increasing the number of Leopard 2 tanks that they're providing from 14 to 18. Well, it, it's, it's significant in terms of portion of, of increase, but, but it's, it's still not enough. We still need more of those. Uh, so, so the tanks issue is not resolved. It's, it's in the process, but we need the bigger numbers, of course. We also need the fighter jets to be able to control our air. I've heard the reporter speaking from Kyiv mentioning the air raid alerts here in the city. Uh, kids go into the bomb shelters uh, pretty often because of those air raid alerts. We need to be able to protect our civilians, our children, our energy infrastructure, but also to cover the air for our infantry uh, to go on, on offensive and, and liberate our territories. Then we need long-range missiles. That is something that we have been using quite efficiently, the shorter range missiles to destroy Russian warehouses. Uh, and we can do more of that if we can reach to longer distances. So that is something that the Ukrainian army is asking for. Uh, but then, of course, ammunition. Uh, the world was not prepared for this intensity of war. 
we are shooting down thousands of, of, of uh, you know, blocks of ammunition every single day, which is something that the world has not faced before. So, so, so just producing this ammunition, uh, because no country at this point has enough stock of that. So, so production is, is setting up production uh, is is very important, because Russians unfortunately have lots of those in stock. So, producing ammunition is something that we need to remember about as well. Are you expecting a, a renewed Russian offensive? I think I, I gave up trying to predict what is going to happen quite some time ago. Uh, I think it is possible. We cannot guarantee, we cannot know, nobody can get into the mind of Putin and to understand what is happening there. I'm not seeing them having the capacity for large um, intensive uh, uh, counteroffensive, but they will definitely try to because they don't really have a choice. They either are stuck in the territories where they are, or they try to go on some sort of counteroffensive. Uh, and the question is, is if we would have enough weapons to, to stop this counteroffensive. So I, I wish I could know the answer to your question. I don't. Uh, I just know that whatever they're planning for, we need to be well prepared for that. So I'm wondering, you know, th this war, the Russians were expecting that your city would fall within days, and it didn't. It's lasted a year, and it looks like it may last a little longer than that. How has it affected you, and how do you think your president, who became a wartime president, has done? Well, it has affected all of us very a lot, and us as the country. You know, I, I remember the, the night when when uh, we heard explosions in Kiev. Uh, I talked to my partner, and he's in the army now. He re-enlisted to the army on the first day of invasion, and he's been there on the front line from day one of this big war. And he told me one thing. He said, whatever happens, never stay away from people. Always be with other people. And that was a very personal advice that he gave to me before before getting to, to war and putting his uniform on. But I think that is something that we learned very deeply, that we survive if we are together, if we are together with other people, if we are staying united. And I think that is the lesson for, for all of us uh, here inside Ukraine, but also for, for the Western community overall. We are strong and we manage to survive if we keep together. That is something very, 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 on the one hand, very personal comment on my side, but I also think that has very strong political implications. We have to stay united. And that is the lesson that we have learned. And I think that that is the lesson that uh, President Zelensky also um, manifests. Because he's always talking about this unity inside the country and the unity of, of the Western um, allies around common ideas and common values and common goals and common interests. So I think that that we have done much better than Russia expected. Russia was always pushing for disintegration. Uh, and suddenly this unity that we as a nation shown and, and the West altogether shown is something that Russia didn't expect. So I think this is probably how we changed altogether over the course of the last year. And I think that unity is what is the whole world, or many parts of the world, are admiring right now. Ukrainian Member of Parliament, Ina Sovson, thank you for taking the time uh, to join us. Thank you.